Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is psalm for the day that is coming to you from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Central Parish in Abuja. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come to acknowledge your excellency in our lives. We've come to give you thanks for the opportunities of life. We've come to give you thanks for the opportunities of this service. Father, magnify yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we are praying. Amen and amen. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 138 verses 1 and 2, which reads, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy truth, for thou hast magnified the word above thy name. Brethren, this Psalm of David is a prayer of thanksgiving. It shows what attitude a man ought to have with his God. It recognizes the place of God in the life of any man, and it celebrates one important reason why mankind was created. That is to be in perpetual state of thanksgiving in our relationship with God. To aim for and to finish our journey through this life well. The Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1, chapter 13, verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14 calls David a man after God's own heart. The book of Psalms show this very clearly. For David was a man eternally grateful for God's many acts of mercies upon his life. The story of his life is a testament of God's abundant grace. His was an attitude that we need to copy every day of our life. Because you see, it comes with an assurance of divine promise. Let us look at some examples of David's life and see how that relates to our life experiences. Perhaps there are one or two things we need to learn from them. Applying the lessons we learned will help us achieve fulfillment in our life's journey. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, chapter 17, verse 34 to 36, David testifies that on two occasions, when the enemies tried to steal his possessions, he went after them under God's protection and killed the lion and the bear. By so doing, he secured the lives of the things placed under his care and preserves God's blessings upon his life. My brethren, God wants us to make the same confessions as David did, that the almighty God who rescued and enabled us to victory in the past is more than able to help us deal with the future, with the challenges of the future. What is that difficulty that is before you that is making you downcast? What is that situation that is bringing fear 
to your mind space. Please bring them now, all of them, to the Almighty God. I challenge you to believe that God is able to help you. So, don't despair, my brothers and sisters. Don't give up, for God is near. He promised in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Isaiah 41 verse 10, that he will help us. The Bible enjoins us in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20, that we should believe in God that we may be established. To be established means to be fulfilled in all key areas of our lives. May we all receive God's grace to achieve and fulfill our purpose in the land of living. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Secondly, when David confronted Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, he made this confession to Goliath. You come against me with sword and spear, but you see, I have come against you in the name of the Almighty God. David went up against Goliath under God's mercy and strength, and the Lord did not disappoint him. God is not in the business of disappointing his children. David triumphed over Goliath, and so shall we also triumph over every one of our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So it is with us that whatever enemies that we are facing, they all shall be overthrown and drowned in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We who are called by the Lord's name shall forever be victorious in Jesus' name. Thirdly, when Samuel was sent to the house of Jesse to anoint the king of Israel, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 33, David's father did not bother to call him. He did not recognize David as being qualified for that high office. But God annulled the plan of man with his own more perfect plan. In his infinite mercy, the Almighty God suspended the selection process until they fetched David and had him anointed king. I have good news for you today, my brothers and sisters, that the Almighty God will suspend every selection process involving you until you are invited and awarded the prize in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every schemes of man to cheat or disenfranchise you are hereby annulled in Jesus' name. Fourthly, when in 2 Samuel chapter 15, Verse 14, David's son Absalom plotted a coup to kill him with the assistance of David's advisor, Ahitophel. God's everlasting arms rescued David. David captured this dramatic experience in Psalm, th Psalm 3, verse 1 to 5. In Psalm 3, verse 1 to 5, where he said, Lord, how are they increased? that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lift up of my head, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. Child of God, I come again to ask you this very important question. What is that conspiracy of the enemy against you? What is that gathering of the agents of evil against your soul, against your family, against your business, against your health, against even your joy? I decree today in accordance with Luke chapter 3 verse 5. That every mountain before you shall become plain, and every crooked path shall be made straight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With your eyes you will behold the glory of the living God upon everything that pertains to your life. And it shall come to be that whenever you do decree a thing, it shall be so established 
that the Almighty God may be magnified in the heavens and on the earth. Finally, brethren, in this psalm, David enjoins us to have an attitude of praising God with our whole heart, not with half measures, but with the whole thing. God requires to have the best from us, the very best of our praise, the best of our worship, the best of our attitudes, especially attitudes that will make people to see God through us, where our lives become the episode that God, that, that people read. The psalmist here gives one of the reasons for that happening, to be God's loving kindness. This is in addition to the truth. In John 17, Jesus informs us that God's word is the truth. Here, the psalmist proclaimed that God honors his word above his name. As we meditate on God's words and connect with his truth, may we be ever more willing to give him praise. May we come to realize through that truth that our God is forever more worthy to be praised and adored. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise for this opportunity you've given us, O God, to minister to your people. In all that we do throughout the days of our life, let your name be glorified. In the name of God the Father, name of God the Son, name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we are prayed.